what we did was we noticed this was awkward because 17 is a jerk, right? It's not a nice power of anything except for except for 17, okay? So, so how can we do this? Now, we, we did some sort of fancy dancing around with our logs, and you may or may not have kept up with it. And um, we're gonna revisit this problem. I want you to recall that our second line last of working, right? I'm uh, oh, sorry, there's one, one no, I'll, I'll leave that. Um, we tried this, and we were like, uh, what do I do with that? But then we, we did our, our, our dancing around, our manipulation, and our second last line of working was this. Pretty sure, okay? Now, we got this, we didn't just get it directly, right? Um, we had to do like maybe, I don't know, three or four lines of working in between here, but we noticed, hold on, like look at this and this line. Like, they look really, really similar, okay? Is there something we could take advantage of here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this idea and I'm going to formalize it for you. This is a, um, I'm gonna give you a law, a new log law. You don't have to memorize this log law. You can just go through the process that I showed you before, okay? But it's so useful and it will be something that you meet in two unit next year for sure that you might as well encounter it now because it comes out of these questions. Okay? So this law is called the change of base law. And it's called that very originally because what we're trying to do is see this log, it's got a weirdo looking base there, right? Five, I can't work with that, okay? But if I can change that base to something I can work with more easily, then I'm sweet and my calculator can take care of it. So, yeah. Sorry, say it again. Do do what? Oh, we did solve it last. We have a number for that, one, right? Oh, okay, sure. Do you want to? Yeah, do you want to go ahead and give it a number? It's two point something, right? No, one point something. One point. Yeah, good. Yeah, fantastic. Um, because do you remember? Right, we knew it was going to be between one and two. We knew it was between one and two because do you remember? Think about your intuition. Because, good, so 5 is like over here and 25 is over here and 17 is somewhere in between. So that's why we got this and it's like, cool, sense check, it, it makes sense, okay? But now I want to, I don't I want to be more than just a, a sense check. I want to get the exact answer. I want to get it every time. I want to go straight from one line to the next, okay? So here's what I'm going to introduce to you. We're going to say, let <coughs> this equal this. Now, this, this looks really hard because it's like, I don't know what M is, I don't know what A is, I don't know what B is. But that's powerful. When you don't know what a number is, the number can be anything. So what I'm going to prove to you is a result that will always work. Not just one that like sometimes work for these particular numbers. Okay? So, um, if I've written this as a log equation, how could I rewrite the same equation in exponential form? Like with indices. Yeah, Kayla. Fantastic. All right. So if you recall, right, um, the easiest part to write first is the bases, right? This base is going to become this base. And then you think, well, okay, M, like the whole definition of the log is how, how long, how much time is it going to take for you to grow to this? And usually that belongs up in the index, okay? So A to the power of, for that amount of time is going to be equal to B. That's really good, okay? So now I'm going to pull this trick. If you remember the way we, the lines we had in between here was, I said, let's, let's take logs of both sides. Do you remember I said that? Take logs. So I'm going to say, for left hand side and right hand side, I'm going to write this. Okay, now let me make a quick note. Again, um, if you have your calculator there, this will be really useful. Um, when you reach for your calculator, I'm going to take it here. So is that um, yeah. log and then that little b? No, I, and that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. Um, you will notice I haven't put any base on either of these sides, okay? I haven't put a base here, I haven't put a base here. I'm just going to make a bit of an explanation as to why, okay? The first reason why is because as I progress through this, you'll see the mathematics doesn't care about what base it is. Like, just like these numbers, like who knows what M is or A or B? They can be anything, and that's why this is so powerful. This will work all the time, no matter what number you place there. So that's the first reason I haven't put anything there. But secondly, and I just want to explain this in a little more detail, on your calculator, right, you'll see you have a log button, okay? And when you do it, when you press log, it, um, it looks just like this, right? It's, it's doing this kind of thing, okay? Now the thing is, that log button, even though it doesn't say so, it has a specific base attached to it. And the specific base is 10, okay? Now, why is it 10? Um, the way you can know is if you have a look just above the log button, it says this. Okay. 
Okay? So you've got that indicator there saying, oh, there's a 10 right above it. I think this button has something to do with 10. And the reason why they've chosen 10 is because, again, I alluded to this quickly, these are scientific calculators. These are calculators that scientists use. Like, that's not just an accidental name. And the kind of numbers that scientists are most interested in using are numbers to do with, surprise, surprise, scientific notation, which is all about base 10, okay? Because, you know, our counting system is base 10, okay? Now, as it happens, like, this is really weird. It's a scientific tool. It, it, it's a scientific calculator. But mathematically, base 10 is actually not a very interesting base to choose, right? Um, it's really nice for writing scientific papers and that kind of thing. But all of the interesting mathematics that you will encounter next year has to do with a completely different base. Not log base 10 of some number, but log base, now there's this weird unusual number which I'm not gonna have time to introduce to you today. today. I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's a number which, um, it goes on forever, but it's approximately 2.718282 something, 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 okay? Um, and we think about this number and how long something growing at that rate will turn into this, okay? And this number is really special. It's so special, it gets given a name. It's called E, right? Um, it's, it's really special, and so therefore, this log is called the log natural. Right? It's the natural log. It's, um, remember, this is all about things and growing. This is, this is for some reason, just like circles uh, have to do with pi, right? that number. Everything that grows in an exponential way, e for exponential, grows in this way. So it's a, called the natural log. And you will find the ln button right next to the log button. Okay? It's, um, it's another kind of log. And you could use that for this as well. Okay, but that's something which you meet more um, in more detail next year. I just want you to know that it exists. So, okay. um, yep. can you change the base from 10 to 500? You can, once, once I show you this, you can change the base to anything you like. Okay, so let's finish it, shall we? Uh, I'm very close, by the way. When you have a look at this line that I've written, okay, just coming back to this proof now, get your head back into the space of not calculators. What can I do with this? Is there anything obvious that jumps out at you to simplify the left or the right hand side? Yeah, I've got power, right? This M up there, it's just kind of like, why, why is he up there? Like, let's throw him out the front, okay? So I'm going to put the M there. I'm left with log A and log B. You okay with that? All right, now the whole point was, I want to take this thing, <coughs> excuse me, and I want to rephrase it in terms of like a nicer base, not like some random number like A, okay? So therefore here, if I divide both sides by log A, like so, then I'll have m equals log b on log a. And by definition, like what I started with, that means this, log base a of b equals this thing on the right hand side, and its log, its base, is anything I like. It can be base 10, it can be base this weird 2.71 number, it can be base pi, it can be base 52, I don't care, right? It'll work for everything. In fact, I actually want you to try this out quickly now. Remember we did this, okay? Uh, 5 to the power of something equals 17, okay? And we got this number out by using this in our calculators. Just to show you <coughs> that it's going to work with any number, instead of punching in log 17, log 5, um, that button there, I want you to go over to the one just to the right, this one, right? Which is another log, but they're just choosing a different base. So it's going to end up looking, your calculator display will look something like this. Uh, here we go. If you do it as a fraction anyway, you can do the division sign, it doesn't matter, okay? Now, when you hit equals, assuming you have input everything correctly, sure enough, you get 1.76 again. And if your calculator could do log base 2 of 17 and log base 2 of 5, you're still going to get 1.76. So you can get any number you like in here. In fact, the formal statement of this, the change of base law, that's it right there, uh, it introduces another letter. It introduces uh, an extra base in there, which they mean to say that thing can be anything you want. Like you can make C, just like A and B, any number that you choose, and it still works, which is very, very powerful.